So joined by Matt and Kieran, the uh, Rat vs. Possum uh, started as a four-piece, I guess, uh, Daphne, Kieran, Matt and Andrew, more recently joined by Adrian. And I suppose according to the official bio, you guys have been jamming since 2008 and some of those early results were described by friends as terrible, but obviously <laughs> you've evolved considerably since then to create some masterful arrangements, some really brilliant layered textured noise rock and experimental pop music. The debut LP on the Sensory Projects record label is called Daughter of Sunshine. We've been receiving a tremendous amount of attention recently, and we were fortunate to have you play also as part of our recent series of live performances, which went down brilliantly well. You had the, a guest choir come in as well. Yeah, yeah. That was, um, yeah, th- I, I think we, yeah, we work a lot with loops, and sometimes, you know, in a just, you know the loops can work really well with a, a live setting, but sometimes with just the audio, they can kind of get a bit, you know, you know, um, a bit swampy. Yeah, yeah things so can get lost. The, yeah. s- the songs are meant to have a choir, pretty much, and that's the only reason we loop vocals to get a kind of layered choir effect. So we thought, well, I suppose, like the you know, when we played with when we played here, it was meant to be just a, a really you know, I suppose the majority of the people were listening on the radio. So we thought, well, we might as well actually get a choir and ha- try and have as true a um, interpretation of the, of the songs as possible. Definitely. But, yeah. Well, it is a really immersive experience, not only watching you perform live, but also listening to you, to your music. And I guess I'm interested to talk to you about the evolution of your sound, going from these jamming sessions where obviously you share a love of different styles of very experimental music, but um, how you took all of those influences and brought them together to um, produce some of the songs on this record. Um, Well, it was a really natural kind of progression the way that we started because it was just Kieran and I at first just really mucking around quite literally in in our friends' lounge rooms and at parties. And then um, just out of, I suppose, the way that we started writing together as a duo, we just naturally needed to add more people and um and then i suppose up and all up until like this point where we said well now let's do a choir because that's the way the songs were meant to be and it was just yeah um it's just been a really kind of natural adding slowly we have we didn't really say okay all of a sudden let's start a five-piece band and get a choir it was really this natural build of two people making music for a choir up until the point of where it is now where we actually do have a choir sometimes how did you guys find the, the process of making your first was it an album was it an ep it's like quite a short it, album it, it's an it, it's, it's an P, album a P <laughs> <player>. <laughs> um yeah was it, it was challenging or? yeah it was it was a really um it was quite a long process um and i guess i maybe maybe matt had some experience in it but um i don't think the rest of us had much experience in um recording and especially recording like that you know it certainly wasn't as easy as you know just having maybe a couple of guitars a bass set up and stuff like we had to work spend a lot of time working out exactly how we were going to um get what we were doing live onto the album and especially because it's loops so we were having to play everything you know for its entirety and we'd we'd find there'd be problems because we would be so used playing them live and they'd have you know, when you're playing them live, you're able to feel exactly where the song's going and kind of know when there should be changes. And then doing that in a studio was so much harder. You'd have to map everything out almost like a formula of when things would happen. Um, and we worked with a really great guy called Clint Sigmund and he was really patient with us and it was done at his home studio. So it was a really nice environment. But um, I think our earlier songs as well, because they were structured just on a loop where we'd have this really simple phrase or a repetitive vocal pattern, and it was it would just start with Kieran and I basically with a whole bunch of instruments plugged into a loop pedal that I'd control live, and the songs would be different every time we'd play them because mm. it'd just be a loop that we'd layer, and sometimes the loop the song the loop would go for you know five minutes, and maybe sometimes we'd go for three minutes if we sort of got bored or the loop didn't sound very good or there's a bit of yeah. feedback <laughs> caught in the loop. So yeah. there was no real rhyme or reason to how we played live. So um, when we actually recorded, we sort of thought, oh well, we can't just really hit a loop and have this repetitive thing going. And because originally we started the perform the shows are kind of pretty performance based as well. So you know I could get a loop and then spend five minutes you know. Feed people fruit in the audience so <laughs> with that that you know rec- on a live record oh, sorry with that uh that on a record um we kind of just had to actually layer this actually map the songs out and, and arrange them almost starting from scratch yeah exactly yeah. i mean you yeah. make a really interesting point because it really is the case that rat versus possum began life very much as a performing band mm. as opposed to a recording band mm. and your live performances are absolutely legendary like <laughs> you know there, there's been a lot written about certain you know gigs where you've wrapped entire venues in bubble wrap yeah. performed with you know incredible quantities of glitter mm. yeah. uh, various states of 
stress and stuff like this. So yeah. I suppose, like, was that your s- the, the starting impetus for the band Rap versus Possum to create something that people could, you know, that would otherwise never have experienced before musically? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think, yeah, uh, <coughs> I think it definitely became something like that. I think initially um, there was probably like an hour worth of rehearsal before we played the mm. first show. <coughs> Excuse me. And so... Um, there, there were ideas of what we wanted to do. We knew, like Matt was saying, you know, we definitely wanted this, uh, like almost a choir effect that you can get with a loop, you know. So there were certain ideas, but it's never really been mapped out that clinically. Yeah. Um, We've always wanted to put on some kind of a show, though, because we all, you know, are pretty heavily involved in, you know, going to see, like, all our, you know, a lot of our friends playing bands. And so there's not really a weekend that we don't go, all of us seeing at least one gig a week, you know, usually a lot of nights a week mm. we're out seeing gigs and you know just that's just what we kind of do in our friendship group or whatever so i think you know we were just sort of like mm, what do we see every week wouldn't it be kind of funny to do this yeah and wouldn't that be weird like you know people who don't really ex- who just like go to a show and expect just to see a band but all of a sudden you know there's a room an entire venue covered in bubble wrap just just kind of you know just just basically for our own entertainment them. as well <laughs> just, like to yeah. keep to keep people interested as well you know just to give just that little bit extra you know which like like matt said like it's it was just like wouldn't it be funny if this happened and so that's where pretty much all the ideas came from and i think a lot of them still do definitely well that's very exciting and i guess people have had a number of different opportunities to see you recently you're playing at the 3000 fifth birthday party you're playing at the triple r performance space Mm -hmm. you've supported a lot of um, bands traveling up and down the coast including washington Mm. and now finally we get a headlining gig where you're launching your album this yeah. Saturday. Yeah, it's so going to be exciting. Definitely. So I guess expect the unexpected when it comes to this Saturday, right? Yeah. Um, well, I think this Saturday, we, we sort of, that being said, we've kind of just, because we were playing and have played so much, it's kind of hard to keep doing these these things. And we sort of, I don't know, I personally thought it might be getting a little bit, you know, a bit of a novelty sort of thing. So we kind of thought, well, maybe we should focus on writing some good songs as well. <laughs> and, um, so that's kind of taken over the focus at the moment. But um, yeah, this, I think, yeah, what's our... Uh, do we have ideas for this Saturday? I'm we're doing... Sh- oh, yeah, we're doing um, performance artists all around the venue. So the idea is, like, you know, people will go and, like, watch the band and they'll they'll go out for a cigarette or something and then they're all of a sudden greeted with, um, you know, like a gorilla performance in the beer garden or something <laughs> by yeah. a performance artist. So there's pretty much... We're going to map out throughout the night there's just going to be stuff happening everywhere around the venue and probably even in the, um, you know, in the kitchen, on, in the kitchen, the dining area. Um, so you don't even have to sort of, you know, pay to... Um, to like you know see some people smear food all over them or whatever they're yeah. going to do I don't know but yeah awesome that's, um, yeah. Well, what's next for you guys afterwards you're doing a bit of an east coast tour mm. then then what's what's next for Rat vs Possum um, I think we're going to start recording sure. again yeah yeah just start recording again because we have we now have um, again because of the um, the album taking quite a long time to get finished a lot of new songs have been written and the majority of them now aren't using loops which is nice um, but yeah, I guess we'll just get straight back onto recording. And I think we, we, we learn a lot from the first time, so we'll probably just do things a bit differently. But, um, we started recording Daughter of Sunshine, um, pretty much this time last year. And it's, it's, um, you know, I went away and Andrew went away for, you know, a while. So it was a good couple of months of nothing last year. It, mm-hmm. um, sort of held us back from sort of just getting it out. But, um, in that time, obviously we pretty much, you know, wrote a whole new set of songs and, um, yeah, I think we're just keen to sort of get those going. Like, we, by the time we finished this one, we had a whole new set of songs. We sort of almost had to force ourselves to to play the songs <laughs> yeah. on Daughter of Sunshine because that yeah. was so old, and you know, didn't want to fall into that trap of you know taking so long to release something and then not wanting to play the song. So yeah. we kind of rethought them, so we enjoy them now. But yeah, definitely recording. Excellent. Mm. Well, we should of course give the gig that's coming up a bit of a plug. Uh, Saturday, May eighth, at uh, the East brunswick club along with free choice duo alan moth and also space cactus as well definitely get down to the east brunswick club and catch these guys live it's certainly a, a great experience we're about to listen to the track animals are you able to give us a bit of a backstory about this track is it an interesting sort of um, story behind it this is what this is one of our f- this is probably our, our oldest song yeah this this was this like is our oldest song this yeah. was um right. yeah when you, when like when matt first played it to me i think we, we wrote lyrics on the spot and then came up with a keyboard part and then slowly it's grown into a bit of a monster. There's not many lyrics, uh, though. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I say we wrote lyrics, weeks. I mean, yeah, it literally took us like, you know, 15 seconds. <laughs> First um, lyrics that came into our head, that was it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's slowly developed over time into 
and what it is, is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and this is a, you know, we still play this differently now. I think as yeah. well. Yeah, mm. excellent. Well, thanks, yeah. thanks so much, Andrew, and thanks so much, Matt, for coming in today to chat. That's okay, Laurie.